Good evening, Powerhouse from Vancouver. Uh, this is August 12th for you, and uh, interesting date in that sense for me in my own journey with uh, leukemia that on July the 12th, a month ago today, had um, my brother's stem cells transfused or infused into my body. They call it a transplant. But it's not actually a, um, an operation, it's just another infusion of some liquids. And in this case, his stem cells. Um, so I'm, I'm very grateful for the um, journey that God has brought me through in the sense of his providing a perfect match in my youngest brother to uh, hopefully put an end to this journey of leukemia once and for all and be able to move on to ministry and uh, be involved again in what God is doing in, in Germany. So I thank you for your involvement. Uh, many of you, uh, some of you may not be a part regularly of House of Hand, but many of you are. And uh, thank you for your prayers. And even as Stephen has come the last uh, few, um, three or four months, he's been here twice, uh, brought notes and greetings and little gifts and so on. And, but especially just knowing that you've been praying. And so I, I bless you for your involvement. And God indeed has been answering prayer. Um, what we want to do with you this evening is in three parts. Uh, this part, I'm just going to do a little introduction. And uh, then a video clip that we already, um, some of you might have seen on YouTube, um, is from a couple of months previous when I still had hair. Hello, goodbye and a beard, and um, we'll um, just give a bit of more of a, the meat part of what we want to say. And then the third part will be Ruth sharing some stories of how God has been at work and <clears throat> demonstrating his presence in our lives. And uh, then I'll conclude just with a blessing and a prayer over you. So that's what we wanted to do today. So I have had a couple little bumps along the road in this journey um, with uh, leukemia but have seen God's faithfulness. And uh, right now, um, at home, obviously, was in the hospital for a couple of weeks uh, in one stint and, and, and 10 days in another stint. But I've been home now for three weeks. And, uh, but three times a week, I'm going into a clinic for blood work and um, assessment. And they hydrate me, lots of fluids each time, and um, on several medications. Some of them have had their own uh, side effects that haven't been so much fun, but others are being reduced, and so I'm grateful for that. And so just in seeing God um, provide and not having um, a lot of the typical side effects, really, I just thank God that he's answering your prayers in this. Um, they're going to be reducing one drug uh, that will maybe cause a few more bumps on the road, but I'm praying that, that God will provide. Uh, but what I want to leave you with just before this next section is um, a promise or a prophetic word that God spoke, I believe came from the Lord's heart uh, over me through a pastoral friend here in Canada. And as he was praying over me, he said he really believed that at the right time and in the right moment, God would maximize his glory in my life. And uh, just believing, continue to believe that. And so thank God that that he is getting glory in the midst of all of this, and he will maximize his glory uh, as we continue to trust him. Well, here we are at this amazing place here at Crescent Beach. It's uh, one of those places that we love to come and in this season of, of our lives uh, we wouldn't have planned uh, staying a lot longer in Canada but as uh, many of you know the journey that, have, that we've been on with, with cancer, with leukemia has um, yeah, thrown a loop into some of our plans but we've just seen God's grace in the midst of it all to be able to as we've said, be stuck in a place. Uh, if we had to be stuck this in a place a in Canada, place. this is a good place to be stuck in. And we're just so grateful to the Lord for how he's 
provided us with uh, a place to stay and a great home church to look after us and care for us. And uh, so on a, support. Yeah, on any yeah. given day, uh, especially when I'm feeling better, we'll try and come down here for a walk. Some days I haven't felt so great. So I'll just sit here, bring my binoculars along and check out the sights of the, of the, the ocean eagles, all kinds of amazing things. We even spotted some, some orcas along the way. But it's been a chance to just rest and uh, soak in uh, the beauty of this place. And I think that's been a, a theme, just part of the, the journey is learning to rest, even with the questions, even with uh, the unknowns, even with the uncertainties of, of the journey. Uh, learning to rest and I, I think that's a way of worshiping as well uh, just putting my trust in the Lord our trust together um, I've had a, a, a couple of verses that I've, I've memorized in my first time of chemotherapy in Germany that um, that have really helped me focus in on this idea of resting and, and treasuring God's presence um, I'll run it by you in German and, and uh, <laughs> give you a couple of uh, loose translations in it. I've, I've, I've memorized these and I, I don't know how many times I've coded them and just meditated on them day and night uh, when I couldn't sleep. And... But it goes something like this. Ich weiß, dass der Herr immer bei mir ist. I know that the Lord is always with me. Ich will nicht mutlos werden. Then er ist an meiner Seite. I will not be discouraged because he's at my side. Darum ist mein Herz erfüllt mit Freude. For that reason, my heart is filled with joy. Uh, und mein Mund lobt ihn mit lauter Stimme, which means, and my mouth praises him with a loud voice. And then the last part, it says, Auch mein Körper ruht sicher. And I think I could translate it by saying, and even my body rests quietly. And so the, the presence of God, His promises to me, gives me the, the ability just to say, I will not be discouraged. A friend of ours used to say to us, regardless of what's going on, I choose not to be discouraged. It's like you, you take the truth of God's word and who he is for us and who he can be for you. And you just say, God, I don't understand everything, but I know you're with me and I choose to just put my trust in you. And so this has been an act of worship, just to rest and trust in you. Well, we've been learning a lot about that, just not just now, but in the last few years about taking the promises he's given us and, and just um, decreeing that over our lives, proclaiming over our lives that He's still promised us um, that he's going to use us. He's got ministry for us. We just really believe that there are still things in the future for us. And that's really helped us, like like Paul told Timothy, to use the prophetic words that have been spoken over him and by them to fight the good fight of faith. And that's what we've been trying to do, learning to do, um, taking things that God said to us prophetically through people praying over us or, or words from scripture and just just um, holding those up to him again and claiming them and saying uh, we believe that, we believe you've got a future and a hope, we believe you've got uh, things you want us to do still and those are the things that kind of keep us going and um, yeah and that idea of worshiping I think that you know sometimes it's real easy to worship when everything's good and I think this is one of those times when we we're giving a sacrifice of praise which is also pleasing to God and it's been really good, a good learning time for us. Someone just, uh, we were just Skyping with a friend the other night and he prayed for us and he prayed that God would use this time to sharpen the sword of the spirit for us. And um, I think that's not only the word being sharper for us, like, you know, doing more in our lives, but also the, the sword that we have to fight with or to, um, to speak to, into other people's lives is getting sharper. And so it, we feel, kind of feel like it's training time too. We're doing lots of reading and praying and 
yeah, it's a time we feel like God's building stuff into our lives for the future too. So a lot of a lot of that um, the time that we've had has just been soaking in God's presence, trusting Him, as Ruth said, almost this more of this fighting mode, not only a resting but um, for lack of a better word, a wrestling mode, like of just engaging and contending, but taking not in our own strength, but taking God's word, taking His truth, and uh, wielding it like a sword. And uh, so it's been an amazing journey. And um, I know there's a sense of momentum that God is putting in our hearts for ministry, but we're we're embracing the time that we have here because we know He's building into our lives. And, we're just grateful and we're, we're, we're praying together a lot, we're worshiping a lot, uh, we're even having communion together often and uh, a verse we've, we've started memorizing together from Romans 15, it says, and it kind of wraps up what we're really feeling in our own hearts, now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. And uh, so we just share those things. We, we welcome your continued prayer and encouragement. We're, we're, we, we're not in this alone. We're in this together with you. And so we just bless the Lord for your involvement in our lives. And uh, God is getting glory through this because we're trusting Him. And even though we don't see all the fulfillment of everything yet that He's put in our hearts, I think it gives him great praise and glory when we put our trust in him, even in the waiting room. So we, we bless the Lord with you and we thank God for you. And it's great to be in this together. So we bless God. So now we come to the less professionally made part of the video, but I wanted to tell you some stories about things that we'd experienced with God from the time when we made that other video and then in the last month or so or a bit more than a month, last six weeks or so. There are just so many signs to us of God's goodness and of His presence with us and that was, that's one of the things that we've been so aware of, His presence with us. Uh, one of the things was I had just left, and this was in June, I had just left for a week, planned to be a week in Calgary visiting our kids and grandkids, and that night that, that I was gone, Ralph started not feeling well, and the next morning he ended up having to go into emergency with um, acute anemia, and it was all a little bit scary, they weren't really sure why it was happening, his immune system was attacking his own red blood cells, and um, so anyway, it was just so cool to us to see how God surrounded him with Christians. There were several nurses in emergency who um, ended up you know, in conversation and found out that they were believers in Jesus and then when Ralph was transported to another hospital one of the paramedics they started talking and it turned out she had graduated from Black Forest Academy in Germany so she was also a believer and then she knew a bunch of people that Ralph and I know and then when he got to the other hospital, the hematologist, Dr. Chen, came in and he said to him, oh, I recognize your name because uh, I'm part of the 10th Avenue Alliance Church and we pray for you and your wife in Germany. And so it was just so special uh, for me too because I wasn't there right then for a few days to know that God was surrounding him with his people sort of and um, a reminder of his presence with us. And then there are so many things, Ralph mentioned that he has had some side effects, but there are so many things where doc the doctor said, yeah, everyone gets this, or everyone who takes, or almost everyone who takes this medication has this really awful side effect, and we're sorry about that, but, and things that Ralph just hasn't had to deal with, and uh, we just see so much of God's grace and mercy and sparing him from many of the side effects or complications which could happen and we trust that he'll continue to do that in the future. And then um, the people that we've met, we just trusted God that as he put us in um, on a floor with all leukemia patients that, that he would use us and 
Uh, something for me that was really special is I used to just hate going in hospitals. Uh, they always made me feel queasy and I just didn't like being there and so I didn't know how, how I was going to do and I had such a sense as I went in every day I just prayed for God to be with me and to use me and to that His presence would um, flow out of me like, like He said it would and um, I had so, such a sense of being carried by Him and supported. And then just the people that we ran into, there's a guy named Peter who Ralph met the day before he was admitted to hospital who um, said, oh, it sounds like we'll be on the same floor and I'll see you up there. And it ended up that we got to know Peter and his wife and his kids and he had a transplant the day after Ralph and the relationship with him is continuing as he, they want to get together. They hugged us as we l left the hospital on the same day and they said, oh, we want to ke keep in touch and get together and mark some of the milestones after, after the transplant together. So we're really trusting that God will be at work in their lives. And then there was a man named Mr. Singh who was in Ralph's room and always kept the curtain pulled. So it was really hard for them to have conversation. He was, he has a lot of other things wrong with him besides leukemia and he was in pretty rough shape. But the day that Ralph left, he was able to give him a scripture verse and, and Mr. Singh told us about um, how much he had enjoyed us singing because a couple times we'd sung together in the room, sung worship songs and how it reminded him of going to church when he was a, a child and so he was really touched also when Ralph was able to write out a scripture verse for him and give it to him. So we just see that wherever God has us, he's going to use us and one of the kind of funny things about that, I thought it was funny anyway, was um, a prayer group that had been praying for us while Ralph was in the hospital had had a word from the Lord about rivers of healing just flowing through the halls of the hospital and so whenever I was walking through the halls I would be praying or singing and just asking God to do that just to bring rivers of healing and one morning I came in and talked to Peter and he said did you hear about our flood this morning and I said no he he said I walked out of my room and here was all this water flowing down the hall right towards my room and I mean it turned out the shower had plugged and there was an overflow of water but I just I thought it was God telling me um, I'm doing it I'm sending rivers of healing and even though you don't see it it's not like everyone's suddenly being healed on this floor but I am here with you and I am using you and there are rivers of healing flowing and especially that it was right straight towards Peter's it was a really cool thing and one more story Ralph always had a beautiful view from his hospital room, whether it was on the 11th floor or later on the 15th floor, um, view out over the city of Vancouver and then the mountains behind. And a friend of ours who was there visiting and was just praying with us before he left said, thank God for the beauty that we could see, both the man-made beauty of the, the city and then the beauty of the mountains that God had made just towering over that. And for us that became a metaphor of how we felt about all the wonderful care that we were getting and the, the medical things that can be done and how thankful we are for that. But so much more is God's care and God's healing power and that's what we're trusting in. And it reminded us of a verse that a friend had sent us from Psalm 20 where it says, Some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we will trust in the name of the Lord our God. And that's what we're doing also for the days ahead. We continue to trust in God. We've seen his faithfulness and his goodness. And we know he'll continue to show his presence and be with us. So we're so glad we could have these few moments with you today at Powerhouse. And uh, we are grateful for your involvement, as we said. And you've seen how God has been at work, the amazing stories, the ways that he's presenced himself with us, reminding us that he will never leave us or or forsake us and so we just speak blessing we speak his presence out over your lives uh, i pray that uh, his presence in your life will become the, the greatest the pearl of great price the the thing that you you desire the most in your life is to know him to know his presence to know his working in your life we speak out his his the joy of his presence it says in the psalms in his presence there's fullness of joy I pray that there'd be just such a, 
an overflow of his joy, joy unspeakable, full of glory, as Paul says, and that uh, your, the, the greatest desire of your life will be to know his presence and to follow him with all of your hearts. So we bless you, we thank God for you, and we pray that uh, his presence will flow out of your life, that as you seek him every day on your own, as you seek him in his word, seek him in prayer and fellowship with others, that the overflow of your life will touch many others. And uh, we bless you and thank God for you. And may you have a great rest of the time today.